All right, this is everything you need to know to ace, make 100, least an A, right, on your test number one. Um, it's over chapters one and two. So you should understand the difference between a population and a sample. Uh, typically, the population will say the entire collection or the number of students in each city in a state. It didn't say that they only got so many. It just says the total number, the height of each student in the class. A uh, sample then would be where I actually pick five out of the class or number of pets for 20 students in a university with 1,500 students. So it's a little easier as it um, with the sample because it will give you a part, a subset out of a whole. Quantitative versus qualitative. Quantitative numbers count. Not just numbers because I always find interesting qualitative zip codes. Those are numbers. What I think of as quantitative are numeric data that you could add, subtract, divide, multiply, and it makes sense. Have you ever multiplied a zip code? If you have, there might be something wrong with you, right? So in other words, quantitative, numerical, um, that you actually would do some type of calculations with, qualitative, labels, um, colors of cars, stuff like that. Levels of measurement. Um, I typically group these in nominal and ordinal, like a naming, and the only difference with the ordinal is there's a ranking. So in other words, like nominal jersey numbers, just because your jersey number is number one doesn't mean you're the best, right? Not necessarily. Uh, but ordinal would be maybe the top ten songs of the week or ratemyprofessor.com, hey. Um, so in other words, it's actually a ranking to, to the labels and the order. Uh, then I group interval and ratio together. A lot of students get these two confused. Um, interval and ratio are both quantitative. They both you use for calculations. Um, they always talk about the difference with interval. There's not a true zero. What that means is a true zero doesn't mean it doesn't exist, like women's dress sizes. You can buy a dress size zero. Does that mean there's no dress? It doesn't exist? No, it's actually, it's actually a dress size. So the true zero means it's non-existent. Okay, so rainfall total, if you get zero, there was actually no rainfall total. Uh, different types of sampling, simple random samples, stratified, cluster, convenient, systematic, uh, simple. Everybody has the same chance of being picked at the same time. Stratified and cluster, put those together. They're subgroups, but stratified, they have something in common. Male, female, uh, biology majors, business majors, and so on. Convenient, they're just easy to get to. Systematic, I pick every third person. All right, so that's one, two, three, you're picked. Four, five, six, you're picked, and so on. Okay, and then you'll be given a frequency distribution here. So I can see that these are ages of employees at a particular company, and then the frequency. And then you're asked to find the midpoint, the relative frequency, and cumulative frequency. Remember midpoint, you just take your actual class here, add together, divide by two. So you do that for every single midpoint. Oops, so that would be my midpoint. Then relative frequency, you take the frequency divided by the total. So you see I had to total these. So I take the relative, or I'm sorry, the frequency divided by the total frequency. And that's how I'm getting every one of these values. Now, because the program might ask you to round a particular way, you might get a little bit different because of rounding, but these should add to one. I mean, sometimes you might get 0.999. Um, and so on, but you should get within the ballpark, right? Cumulative frequency says start at that value, and then the next one, add take 47 and add the value before. The next one, take your total from the before, and when you add these, if you do it right, you should get 242 at the end. All right, uh, mean, median, and mode. If I have ages of students, I want the mean. I just take them all, add them all up, divide by the total number of students. Median, the only big trick, be sure you put them in order. If there's an, an odd number, then it's just the number in the middle. But in this case, an even number, you have to average the two numbers in the middle. 
and the mode, the value that happens most frequently. Most of you will probably be using a calculator or stack crunch for this and for the variance and standard deviation, but I'll still show you how to do these manually. Range, just the max minus the min. Be careful if it says population or sample, okay? Because remember, there's a difference on what you're dividing by with the uh, variance and the standard deviation. So once you find the variance, you just take the square root of it and that gives you the standard deviation. All right, so if I have these ages of students here and I want to find the range, I just take the largest minus the smallest, so that's the range. Uh, we found the mean from the last question, so the variance, if you're doing this manually, I wouldn't, but if you don't have a calculator uh, that will do this for you or stack crunch, then you're doing these manually. You take each data value, 18, 17, 18, 19, 22, and 25, and you subtract it from the mean, so it's the 19.8. You square it, you add all of those up, and then because this is going to be a sample, you divide by the sample size minus one. All right, so read the question carefully. If this is a sample, then you use the sample size minus one. If it says a population, I divide by six. And then once again, the standard deviation, I just take the square root of my variance. Empirical rule, very, 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 very important. I, I push this all the time on students when they first take a stats class. These are the rules. If you're one standard deviation um, below and above the mean, that's 68% of your data. Two standard deviations, 95% and then three standard deviations, 99.7%. So I have the mean and the standard deviation. So 68% would be the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation. 95% would be the mean minus two standard deviations, the mean plus two standard deviations, and then finally, 99.7% would be the mean minus three standard deviations and the mean plus three standard deviations. Learn that empirical rule, important. Coefficient of variation, um, given, yeah, you'll either have to be given or you'll have to find the mean and the standard deviation. And so it's just taking the standard deviation over the mean to get the percentage of the variation. Quartiles. If I have quartile one, and these are in order, what I do is I cut it in half, and then quartile one will be that middle one. Uh, quartile two, remember, is the median. Quartile three, these bottom three, so that's the bottom half, the middle value. IQR, Q3 minus Q1. And then how do you know if you have outliers? The rule is you take Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR and Q3, 22, plus 1.5 times IQR, and see if you have any values, and we don't, outside of, of 12 and 28. If you did, if there was an 11 up here, it'd definitely be an outlier. And then finally, the five number summary we use to do box plots, just doing the same thing as far as the quartiles, but then also the other two values are the minimum and maximum. So I know that was a very quick review, but hopefully you got all this material down. Um, just be sure, again, the biggest tricks, median, your data's in order, variance, standard deviation, are you doing a population or a sample? That's it.